Hello, boys and girls. How are you? You know, today is going to be a wonderful day. Today could be a wonderful day for many reasons. We might get mail from the postman. Or we might just get a song from Ace. Because I'm back. Like the thrills. I know you like that. I know you like that. Especially Anthony Matthews. I know you like that. Thrills whipping your ass last week, making it not even a challenge for me, but uh, I appreciated the effort nonetheless there. So we are back with the halfway point. Dunzo, week 12, on the up and up. Everything else behind us. Just like last week, a slew of teams sitting us right around 500. Five and six, six and five. We got Big Green up here. We got Jumbo Cock down here. Dr. Larry here. Everybody else right here. Right there. Right there. And this like smushed up little region. There's like nine teams just like humping each other. Mm, mm, mm. It's like a shark orgy. Um, anyways, so um, we had some great matchups last week, but we're done with that. We're looking ahead to this week. Um, Jersey of the week. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way now. Ultimate Warrior. Got to have that representation of Money in the Bank. And... I was the ultimate warrior last week by whipping Anthony's ass. And I guess if you want to look at it in terms of the NBA, good job, Warriors. You won. Good job. Way to buy a championship. Way to buy your virginity from a prostitute, as they've been saying. <laughs> Ding! I stole that. Definitely didn't make it up. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the long intro. I'm back. I'm back. No, 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 no. I'm back as well. A little Eminem. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit a couple things before we get into the matchup previews, though. So let's go ahead and talk about that. I want to talk about the halfway point being done, though. Everybody 6 and 5 and up. Big Green looking really solid. Next thing. Big Green's not here. Everybody seems like the studs and duds column for each team. I'm just going to give you a little halfway mark, you know, all stars and bench warmers. So, Benson, that was all for you, buddy. Let's go ahead and talk about some of our uh, all stars and bench warmers. Um, surprises this year. Let's go first with the Monster Masher, Aaron Judge. Just crushing dingers left and right. Like uh, Anquan Bolden catches um, coconuts off a tree. Uh, rocking and rolling there. Next up, Corey Dickface Dickerson. Who the hell saw this transformation coming? Batting right at 300. Excuse me, right over 300. Knocking in dingers. Um, leading the Rays offensive charge with Longo right now. And just being a surprise all around. Uh, picked him up off Scrappy, basically. And uh, last offensive surprise, little Zach Coe's art action, the artist formerly known as Coe's, uh, crushing the ball in Cincinnati right now. We fortunately just landed on the DL. Nonetheless, does not take anything away from that. And side note about Zach Coe's art, if we vote him for NL All-Star NL All -Star starter, Joey Votto's going to buy him a donkey. Who here doesn't want to see Zach Coe's art owning a motherfucking donkey? I know I do. So he, I'm voting for him, All-Star starter, NL. Um, pitching surprises of the first half. Um, lo and behold, man, I just acquired Irvin Santana. Rock and roll on Ben Seam all year long. Three complete game shutouts. Gotta love that. Number two overall player in fantasy from Irvin fucking Santana. We know it's gonna come down, um, but I'm gonna ride it out. You know, I'll, I'll take what I can get out to dumb Chris Sale. Um, next up, we got, um, Robbie KKK. Ray, 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 Ray. Uh, striking fools out left and right. Um, having a great scoreless streak, you know, 32 innings, .49 ERIA during that time until last week when he got jacked a little bit there. But he's been lights out, unhittable. And another NL West pitcher, um, Alex Wood of the Dodgers. Nobody saw this coming. I mean, we knew he had some capabilities. If he could stay healthy, he's pretty much stayed there. And he's been just whiffing folks almost at a frequent pace as Robbie Reyes. So the Dodgers are really happy with the uh, – what he's given them in the rotation, especially when you got guys like Hun Jun Gru and Brandon McCarthy and Yulio Urias, who are always getting hurt or something, you know, popping up, slipping down the stairs, dislocating his shoulder for shit, not loud. Um, the bench warmers, though. So about some bench warmers here. These are all players that are owned right now. Pitchers. We're gonna start there, and it's gonna look like a Cleveland Indians. Um, represents um, pretty hard right here with Trevor Bauer and Dan the Sal. Both of them still striking fools out. But they're giving up two, two and a half hits in any to do that. ERA is over five and a half, and they're just pitching miserably right now. 
Um, so we're going to hope they get it back together if you're a Windians fan like I am. But I don't own Dan the Sound, nor do I own Trevor Bauer. So I could really give a shit less if they get it back together. Uh, last one, Chicago Cubby, another player in the World Series. Could it be a Quinky Dink? Um, maybe so, maybe not. I pretend to think so. Maybe a little overworkage. But Jay Garrietta, my other pitching disappointment right now this year, has not been up to snuff at all. You look out there, you're like, oh, five innings, you know, three hits, uh, 100 pitches. So he's not efficient. He's not getting guys out. He's not really helping your fantasy squad right now at all. And that was a rare occasion when he's only given up a couple hits. Uh, usually it's like eight hits and five earned runs recently in those five innings. So um, my um, offensive players that have been a real shit bag this year. Uh, start off Schwarbaby. Schwarbaby just been awful. Awful, 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 awful. Not even a platoon player anymore. Well, not even a starter anymore. Straight up platoon player. And uh, nobody really wants that on their team, holding it down. But Code the Nope, still rocking shore, baby. Hoping he can turn this funk around, I guess, two months, as Sav Dog stated earlier. Not really a funk anymore. More of a, uh, a, a, I guess, what we call it? More than a trend. Maybe it's like a fact. Or maybe it's just like a progression. We can go with that. Uh, Trevor Story, next up. Last year, great rookie year. Uh, hurt himself, came back this year, we thought he was healthy, thought he was going to do something in Coors Field, and he has not been able to do anything in Coors Field this year. Uh, Aharb just picked him up, hoping he can bring a spark to his team, but as Ben can probably attest, it's going to be a like Dancy Swanson-esque pickup. We'll go in a couple games, we'll have to go 0 for 4 with 2 or 3 strike guns, but back to the scrap heap we go. There's better players out there. And lastly, Rognet Odor. Rognet Odor. Once again, another play it was horrible the first half. Horrible the first half. Just recently it started to show a little... Heart beats, heart beats. So to the point that Ben has reacquired him after dropping him. So I hope for Ben's sake he uh, starts going back to old Rogue Ned. And I don't mean old last year. I mean old earlier this year when he was really bad. So that's all for you, Ben, there. Uh, so those are offensive, defensive. Offensive is something I say pitching, um, all-stars, and bench warmers. And one more thing before we get into uh, the matchup ratings. I know we're already at the seven and a 7.5-minute mark, but, you know, this is the halfway point, so you might as well take a minute and enjoy it. Playoffs right now. Playoffs! Playoffs! Just trying to win a game here. Uh, right now, playoffs. Looking at the six seeds right now that I would think would be in the playoffs or should be the final six. Looking at the rankings right now. Stanies, as I see them. Number one seed, B Green. Um, these were written prior to all the trades that transpired at, I don't want to say, like between the hours of 8 and 9.52. We've had five trades go down on this Monday. It's been insanity at its finest. Um, but we have Joe Boo at number two. Flash at number three. I think Flash is going to still win that division. Uh, Cody's right on his heels, though, but I don't think anybody else has a chance in that division. <laughs> um, Man Bear Pig with the number four. Thrills checking in at number five. And Q, question mark, checking in at number six. So right now I went from having three Harbor Bros and family members in the playoffs to just one. Um, so you guys come at me hard if you want to, but right now results speak for themselves. And a Man Bear Pig has been the best Harbor this year. A hard keep uh keep trying man. You're gonna, you're gonna keep it up, Ben. Fuck you. Mom thrills. You're still number one in this guy's book. Alright, so without it out of the way, let's go ahead and hit up the matchup review uh, matchup previews for this week. Um, let's go ahead. We'll start off with the team I was just um, slightly backhanding right there with Ahar, Belch Huggins versus and David Justice for all. Code knows made uh, he was participated in all of the trades that went down tonight. I think aside from the uh, wacky deli and uh, Dr. Larry trade, and uh, I think that uh, Belch is going to pull it out this way. I think Belch is still going to beat and David Justice. Uh, although the Chris Sale acquisition, you know, he gets him twice this week. Sorry, Belch, I'm actually changing that pick right fucking now, dude. Yeah, I'm going to change it from Belch to and David Justice with the dub 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 this week. I'm surprising myself here. Uh, so, and David Justice, you're gonna have Chris Sale. You got some good players going for you, uh, and I think your uh, your your trades are starting to finally uh, really help your team instead of hinder your squad. So, good luck this week. Um, next up, nothing else matters versus Q question mark Anthony. Uh, Anthony at the gym meetings. It was awesome to see. You. Didn't make any trades. Maybe overvalued a player or two. I don't really know. I wasn't involved in your discussions with Ben. I was in there, you know, making deals with Ben, not just talking to fucking about it. And I'll, I'll talk a big game. I fucking woo. Walk a big game. And uh, I think, uh, that's why I think nothing else is going to win this week. He's been dedicated all year long to an nth degree, owning his own business, really giving him the free time he needs to really focus on his fantasy team. And he's doing that. Uh, we're playing with his heart, not or playing with his head, not his heart this year. And I think he's going to pull it out. So nothing else matters. He's going to beat QQQ. 
Moving on from um, the team that beat Q last week, Original Champ versus Joe Boo. This is a good, uh, good old fashioned rematch of Week One, just like every matchup is this week. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, the results are going to be slightly different this time. I think I'm going to pull out the dub. I'm feeling really good about my offense. Quite some really good players. My pitching staff. If I can get below a five ERA, a six ERA, that would be freaking stellar. But I still think I'm going to beat you. Um, per usual, I'm going to check myself to win. And by my calculations, that puts me at a stellar 13-0 and 0 this year. Um, next up, um, my, uh, let's see, I'm going to go with the, I'm going to let this speak for itself, what I think of this pick this week. This is my. My. Oh, get a Scott Hall. Bam, right there. My Stone Cold Lock of the Week is going to be Dr. Larry versus Wacky, Wacky, Wacky Deli. Dr. Larry made a trade with Wacky Deli this week, which is crazy considering they're in the matchup against each other. Matt Kemp for Brandon McCarthy and somebody else I wasn't paying attention to. And I still think that Dr. Larry is going to pull out the dub this week. So, Dr. Larry, don't let me down. Do not let me fucking down. I mean, excuse me, Mother Harbor. Please, Mother. Please, Mother Harbor. Do not let me down. Uh, moving on. Got a couple more matchups to hit on. Let's go ahead and hit up a Man Bear Pig versus Power Gloves. Power Gloves really took it in the A last um, night. Watch that Sunday night game. I saw the hit that really put it in him. I was really sorry about that. But you're in, once again, you're in my division. We're two games back of three different teams. It's going to be really tough for you to catch up. So um, just keep fighting. But uh, this week, you're not going to win. Man Bear Pig's team. Coming around, playing on all cylinders. So, Man Bear Pig picking up a dub in this guy's book right here. So, we're looking at uh, one more matchup left this week. We're looking at Jumbo. J is for Jumbo versus Master of Puppets. Master of Puppets just had Zach the Coes go on the DL, which is kind of a bummer for him. But he's still got Tame, still got Miguel Cabrera, maybe kind of pitching well. And Andrew McCutcheon, I mean pitching well. Oh, that's hilarious. Miguel Cabrera starting to hit well. And uh, Andrew McCutcheon is playing like Andrew McCutcheon, like the MVP candidate, which means I think that Master Pub is going to win this week. Jay Cock getting your shit shut back down, bro. Sit back down. Fall back. Fall back. All right, so to recap, we got the original champ. We got Belch. We got Nothing Else Matters. We got Man Bear Pig. We got Master of Puppets. And we got the Stone Cold Stunner of the Week. Let's watch a few more stunners. Everybody loves Stone Cold. Bam! Stone Cold Stunner. All right. That's enough of that. So on that note, let's send it off in stellar fashion this week with a little...